Welcome to the Ministry's Papers. Today we're going to talk a little bit about YouTube and all the things that's been happening in our community in YouTube. Uh, and to start us off, before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about hobby progress. Well, for my competition piece, I am 90% done with the miniature, I would say, because I'm going to tweak a lot of little things uh, for, the t for the miniature to really bring it up to that master class level. Um, right now, I think I'm in the journeyman uh, because I always sell myself short, <laughs> no matter what. Uh, but um, I want to bring it to the point where I feel comfortable that, yeah, this could compete in a master class and maybe walk away with something. Um, so that means I still have time to finish. Uh, gives me another month to work on the miniature. And with that month, I'm going to keep pouring myself in slowly but surely, adding details, sharpening up lines, making sure that the, the transitions are, are, are beautiful, that there's nothing that I left out. I keep on looking at a mini and say, okay, so what, what did I miss? What did I miss? And then at sometimes I just take some time off from the mini because I'm a little too close to it, work on another project and come back to it with fresh eyes and I tend to do a lot better when I do that you know really look at things with fresh eyes take a step back uh, instead of obsessing over the details because sometimes if you work too closely to something um, I find out that um, you miss certain things after a while after a while you kind of just want to get it done and if you just want to get it done you're not going to really give your highest quality work if you just want to get something done I would know because when I painted any kind of corn um, miniatures I kind of just want to get them done like I don't enjoy painting them I don't know it's my thing I don't love corn I don't know do you have a faction that you do not like well if you do post it down in the comments and tell me why you don't like it let's start off a conversation when it comes to that right okay so next going on to computer hobby pro well, I can't say progress I can say a little bit of limbo and the reason why I'm going to do a little bit of limbo and I'm not talking about like you know limbo 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 because that's a little bit something different but no no what I'm talking about is like you're in space and you kind of like there is nowhere to go you're kind of in limbo um, and the reason why is because well recently in computer news um, and Nvidia released uh, super versions of their 2070s uh, video cards, and Ryzen actually put up AMD actually put up uh, Radeon and put you know their versions of video cards up. They're brand new, released on the markets, and they are you know uh, just a little bit above what they are you know the performance wise. Now it seems like in the industry everything is going towards that the type of video card, and it's actually uh, I was looking at Newegg, and it's actually cheaper to go super at this point than paying full price for the regular cards of the 270 video cards. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let's put it this way. If the industry came out with a newer version of an apparatus, yet it's cheaper than the older, slower version of the apparatus, which one would you get? Now, I have two options here. I can get the older, slower version, which works great for video editing, and I'll have no problem with it, and wait for that price to go drop because you know you got something new the old one drops right or I go the super version of it and still play less than what I would pay if I bought it today well either way I'm waiting I am waiting and I need to wait until everything goes into place where either I can get my hands on these super cards uh, or I'll purchase the regular cards at a much cheaper rate so I can get a discount. And I say discount, but, you know, <laughs> the computer's pretty. Well, anyway, that is um, that is the last component of hardware there is for the piece for the computer. So right now, just putting on the brakes until I can get my hand on something special. And it's not because of, well, me. It's more because of the industry just made a huge change. And when it comes to technology or something like that, uh, when it comes to all kinds of technology, it, it keeps on advancing. I mean, that's the nature of technology. It keeps on going up and up and up, right? So, you know, I'm there with that. However, I am saving up for the Adobe Cloud, which has Lightroom, which has, um, you know, all these kinds of, of apps for Adobe, including Photoshop and everything else. And, um, 
for teachers, they actually get a great deal. It's $19.99 per month, and it's a, a per month subscription, right? And I get all the apps for the first year, and then it's $29.99 a month forever. Um, I don't think there's a, a limit to how many times you can kind of get off the program and go back on the program and get it for $19.99 again. I don't know. I'm probably gonna get dinged for that one. <laughs> I'm just saying, teachers, you know, we don't make a lot of money, you know? And we create, um, and that's our mission, because <laughs> we create, and that's our mission, and listen, close, all right, stop. Me and my old school rap. All right. <laughs> all right, so there is a hobby progress, sort of, kind of, um, sorry I'm not gonna show you, but I do have a plinth that I'm making, so today, um, well, yesterday, I actually talked to Mr. Vince Ventruella. Uh, he is my mentor. Uh, and he, he, he um, told me that, you know, I, I just, you know, make a plinth, make sure it's bigger than the other piece. And, and I have some wood, and I'm going to make the plinth. I'm not going to buy a plinth. I'm going to make a plinth because I have way too many carpenters and, and furniture makers in my family not to because there's just so many woodworking tools around and stuff like that that I, that I have access to. So yeah, man, I made it happen. And I took pictures of the process of me making the plinth. I'm up to the last part of the plinth. And right now it's drying in a, I guess, a warmer, drier environment than my basement. Because my basement tends to be a little more humid than you know the upstairs of the house. Um, which is great for, you know, drying times for paint. Well, not great for drying times, but, you know, your, your paints won't dry out on you. You have a little more working time with them when you're down here. Just a little. Smidgen. Smidgen. All right? Uh, so I kind of like that environment. But uh, when it comes to something that you need to dry by the next day, it's better to leave it upstairs. And I left it upstairs. So what I'm doing is is I cut an oval out, right? And I make sure that there was an inch straight around there. Uh, and I cut segments out. And then um, I cut around the oval uh, using a bandsaw and went around, went around, a uh, nice little table there. And, you know, and then I uh, sand down the edges and then I use a router and I kind of took the bit around there so I can give it like a really, really nice texture. And what I'm doing is I'm covering, smothering uh, a whole bunch of wood putty on it, right? On the top and on the bottom. And then I'm gonna sand that sucker out to a beautiful, beautiful sheen. And then I'm gonna paint it either flat black or you know, I'm gonna match the base somehow. I kind of want it to, to be obscure. Uh, well, in other words, I don't want you to focus on the absolutely beautiful plinth that I I'm going to make because I want all your attention to be on the mini <laughs> that I'm actually going to uh, be competing with. Um, I'm also going to have to or want to possibly um, if I can take a metal piece right and I'll, I'll bend it uh, after I engrave it with the title of my uh, Space Wolf, my um, Night Titan uh, and I think the theme is, I, I, I don't know the yet, I think it's, um, there are no wolves on Fenris. I think that's going to be the theme because I have a surprise and all that. And if you've seen, if you've been following, you kind of know that there's something in there that's going to like, you know, maybe I'll take their no and I'll put an X next to it or something. or put some claws next to it. I don't know. You, you'll see what happened. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Uh, a lot of a whole bunch of little things that I'm going to add to it. So there it is for the hobby progress. If you do want to see the plant and the process and what I do, I am going to upload those pictures onto the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion on Facebook. So if you're following me there, then uh, you'll see the pictures. And if you're not following me there, consider joining the family where we just post things and ask questions and, and we're kind of interactive and it's a smaller group. And I kind of like that it's a smaller group because we kind of like know each other. We're kind of like family there. It's not these huge groups that you kind of like ask a question and you kind of get lost. Um, it's a smaller group, it's a more intimate group. Um, look us up, the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion on Facebook. And I just heard a story on, um, I was listening to the radio while I was driving and doing some errands and uh, stuff. And I heard that, you know, Facebook, well, I mean, this is no news for old fogies that a lot of younger people, Generation Z's, I guess that is. I'm an Xer, Gen X. Um, <laughs> Generation Z's are, you know, even Snapchat, it's like, it's getting old, right? They're just moving on. They're just moving on. That's right. It just blows my mind because I'm old school. So I was like, 
when I when I was on the internet, you heard meow, wow, wow, meh, eh, eh, and that's a phone line that you were trying to connect to the internet. And it was like, welcome, you got mail. It was great. It was great back then. It was it was it was slow. It was very slow, limited in what you could do. But it was all discovery, which was pretty amazing. Anyway, now people are just getting bored with everything. Not me. <laughs> everything is new to me. All right. Anywho, time for the question of the week. Animation. I can't wait. I'm gonna do some animation or something like that. I'm gonna make something. Anyway, question of the week comes from Lehman Russ, the All Father. <laughs> Actually, it's a great member who I really agree with his philosophy that I really don't care how long something takes as long as I do it to a quality in which I'm happy with because I'm gonna be looking at it in a case for more than I'm gonna be playing with it. So if I'm gonna be looking at it, I need to be happy with it. So painting to a level where I'm happy with, no matter how long it takes, throw that out the window. You know, I'm not paying for a competition, so I don't need a piece for a game or anything like that. And there's no pressure there. Uh, I'm not painting to get it over with, but I am painting for the satisfaction of painting. Painting for the sake of painting. Even if I don't play the game. Which every time I play the game, I get wiped off the table, so. Um, but that's going to lead me into uh, my YouTube. I mean, I'm just watching YouTube and like I've been watching a lot of things unfold and there was like so many cool things. I wanted to do a show about other YouTube channels. Crazy, right? All right. Um, I'm not going to be doing a painting chat today uh, simply because my mom is in town and I want to take her to a baseball game. You know, I have fun. She went on a horse ride the other day and she's from New York City, you know. So horse rides are a big deal, you know, and, and you know, going out to a local baseball game and, and you know, have it. I had a banana split with her this morning. Go mom. All right. <laughs> uh, so we're having fun. I'm going to take her to a baseball game. So no painting chat today, but I am going to take a break from my night Titan. So I need, I'm, I've been focused too closely on it and I need to have some kind of separation from it. So I am going to be working on the Garden of More. And if you look back here, you're gonna see a whole bunch of pill bottles and stuff like that. That's the Garden of More completely sub-assembled because I love painting sub-assembled. I do, I do. If I have to assemble something, I will, but more often than not, if I can get away with pulling it apart and doing it separately, I will as well. Uh, I will because I feel like to have greater control around a miniature and to paint stuff to look it around than if they have hold a whole piece and I'm like, oh, what if I make a mistake or something like that and I don't want to deal with that. I mean, I make a mistake, I'll paint over it, but am I going to be wasting time on painting over it? I kind of don't want to paint over it. It's terrain for crying out loud. I wonder what crying out loud is. Like, that would be crying out loud. I mean, just physically right there. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I can't stop this feeling anymore. All right. Um... I wanted to talk about that question of the week. Lehman Russ, the all fault, no, a great guy, uh, who commented or questioned, what is your favorite Space Wolf models? New or old? New or old? Favorite Space Wolves models. There's an S to that. Models. So I don't have to just lame one. <laughs> <sighs> okay, um, I like the Dreadnought that they came out with, although it's not Wolfified enough for me. Wolfified is a word. Um, so I had to make more wolf components in there, and I do have a painting tutorial on how I did that. Um, but I took the easy to build model. I have another one. I have another one, um, and it's in the tooth and claw set that I got. So there's that that I put out. Um, gosh, I have, I've never painted a Primaris Marine yet, or I haven't yet, um, so I'm not there. Uh, the humble, the humble Marines, the humble Marines were fun. They were fun and exhausting at the same time. I don't, I'm not, I'm not happy that I, and I only had to paint 15 of them. Although 15 took better part of a year in order for me to paint because I paint so slow, learning how to do it, learning how to base coat it, learning how to, you know, and I think that's, that's like the, one of the hardest things learning. So when it comes to learning new things, I guess my regular, uh, Marines, my, my regular uh, blood claws, uh, would be the one that I learned from. Uh, so that's a category, a subcategory of my favorite models. 
the one that I've learned from the most would be that one. The, the, the actual humble space marine, the, the blood claws uh, that I put together. Um, next, trying something with, um, with conversions. My first conversion would be my... Um, just doing something a little, little different would be my Terminators where I switched an arm from one into another. Whoa, I know, right? I got, well, it's the beaten track here. Well, hold on to your hats because I don't even wear a hat right now. Um, maybe I should, you know? Melanoma's a thing. Um, <laughs> so when it came to converting or starting to get brave enough to convert, it would have to be my Terminators, specifically the captain. And because, well, um, because Uncle Adam actually had his favorite uh, Marine, he said his model was, uh, or best painted model, was his uh, Tickle Me, Tickle Me Space Marine that had two of the claws. And I kind of wanted to have the Wolverine claws for the, for the, um, Terminator, although I found out the Wolverine claws aren't that great when you put them on the table, but I don't care. It looks cool. So there we go. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. Um, people get upset at me on that. It's like, oh my gosh, you built it with the wrong thing. And I'm like, yeah, but it looks cool. So it doesn't matter. I don't care. Am I going to keep getting wiped off the table? Probably. Probably. But does it look cool every other day that I look at it in my case? So that one time I got uh, blown off the table six months ago or every day ever since that for six months straight that I enjoyed it because it looks cool. I mean, just, you know, do the math. Okay. Pure enjoyment. It's a hobby. If you're not purely enjoying it, then what are you doing? What are you doing? All right. So getting over uh, my fear of conversions would be my... Terminator models that I've done. Okay. Um, first vehicle that I painted was a Storm Wolf. Um, I think it's cool because I really went to detail and I think that I really did a really good job of learning how to do gems and reflective glass uh, because I did every single button on the inside of that Storm Wolf and every monitor and button in the cockpit that I did, it was pretty cool that I really got the hang of it, getting the light in, getting the light expanded out, going from darker to lighter on every single button on the inside of that cockpit, even the stuff that you don't see. It doesn't matter. I got practice out of it, so there's value to it right there. All right, so when it comes to learning how to do gemstones or reflective surfaces, it was the Storm Wolf that would be my favorite model. And we're gonna get favorite overall uh, on the characters uh, soon. All right, so uh, I would have to say my current favorite model is always the model that I'm building because I pushed myself artistically and I pushed myself to the point of, I don't think I could ever do this kind of, you know, getting, getting into the scared zone right there, took a class on how to build it. And it's gonna be that Night Titan. I'm in love with that thing until I build the next miniature. <laughs> it doesn't last long. It doesn't, it doesn't last long, right? When it comes to Space Wolves. Um, I might enjoy because the next Space Wolf after that is going to be Wolf Lord Crumb. Then I'm going to do Murder Fang, which is pretty cool. All right. Um, I'm not crazy about my own Bjorn. I mean, it's okay, but it's not going to be my favorite. Definitely not. Definitely. Definitely not. Not Judge Wagner. Um, but, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. I think it's pretty cool. There's a lot of color into it. A lot of people like it. It has a lot of views uh, for one of my my tutorial video, so you can check that one out too. Um, I really enjoyed doing the Fenerson Wolves. That was the first fur I've ever did. Fur. It's the first fur that I've ever done. So going from not knowing how to do fur at all to making something that a lot of people like and that I enjoyed myself, I, I kicked it up a notch uh, with my competition piece where I did, uh, I was like, hey, you know what? It's a competition piece. Let's try something new. <laughs> I did a completely different uh, paint scheme uh, than my Highland Wolves that I painted for my Fenris, for Rizian Wolves. I completely painted something different there. I went with a gray uh, wolf, so it's different. But that was fun. That was fun. So for Rizian Wolves, I would say for, for the fact that I was pushing fur um, and the concept of fur, uh, I think that was pretty darn cool. 
Hey, wow. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, let me see. Uh, goodness gracious me. <laughs> oh, good golly, Miss Molly. I don't know. I, I mean, guess future bills. What I'm really looking forward to. Well, no, before I even get into that, okay? Favorite character, uh, Space Wolf character would be Ragnar Blackmane. Um, only Space Wolf character I actually read book about. Three books. Going on four. Um, and he's just a cool dude. He's just a flipping cool dude. I really like Ragnar Blackmane. That's going to be my, my faves, faves, faves. Um, Alright, stuff that I'm looking forward to is building up a custom made Primaris Ragnar Blackmane. I'm going to be doing that. Um, I have the bag. I have the products. I have different kind of conversion bits. I have uh, long, strong, flowing hair. I'm, I'm really going to get into that. And that's going to be a project uh, that I will put. It's going to be my first Primaris Marine. Okay. So I'm going to do that and post that as a tutorial. I'm really looking forward to doing that. Logan Grimnar, he's a beast. He's just a cool dude. You know, that is another one, and I do have him back there somewhere. It's going to be another tutorial that I'm going to do, Logan Grimnar. Uh, people make fun of him with the sled and all that. I, I appreciate the models for what they are. I like the woven models. People complain that the woven models are kind of chintzy. I don't, I don't know. I think they're kind of cool. Maybe I can reposition how they're standing so that, you know, uh, you know, daniel son, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, look at that crane kick. Um, so maybe I can reposition that, that he's leaping off of something and it looks a little cooler. I don't know. I'll do something with that as well. But the Wolfin uh, is kind of unique because every person in the group seems like it's an individual. I think that's the part of the Space Wolves that I like the mo most, is that every character has a theme, but kind of it looks like an individual model and it has character in and of itself. It's not just a regular troop. Every single troop has a little something. You know, wolf head on one, you know, uh, chains and bones going on the other. I like that differentiation of model. I don't like rank and flank. Um, in other words, it's just, you know, just another model. I like that there's individuality to it. And I just love the Space Wolves because of their character, because of all the character. So, all right, so, here's the big one. What's my favorite Space Most model overall? This is my built, my favorite built and painted Space Wolf model. Currently has got to be the Night Titan. The ones that I'm looking forward to are Primaris Marines. I think there's so much that I can do with there. Uh, with that, the Tooth and Claw set, there's the, um, the one with the Eldar. That set, I have that set. Um, I have the Dark Imperium, which I still need to bust open. Um, I have a Shadow Spear, which I also need to bust open as well. So I have a lot of Primaris. A lot of Primaris. I'm going to be adding to this army like there is no tomorrow. So there's going to be that as well. So, yeah. Night Titan. Favorite Space Wolf model. <laughs> Least favorite Space Wolf model. Uh, the current Black Gnar Black Mane that's like this. Hi! It's like Nigel Stormwolf. He's like, hi. Not the Terminator armor. I think that's kind of cool. Although I think it's Failcast or something. Hi. I don't know. Something about that. Alrighty, let's get on to the topic of the day. Start off with some drama. That's right. There is some drama in the YouTube hobby. Not really, but kind of. It's exciting. All right. So I'm going to start off with a video that Luke's uh, affordable paint service, Luke's APS, uh, he released a video about Scale 75 and their ease to use uh, and how right out of the pot, there's a, they're very opaque and you can get great coverage with them and he did a, t a complete test over there because of their high opacity and their ease of use. I disagree with that completely, but I'm not the only one. Cujo painting, which I learned how to do tartan design. I mean, that's how I learned tartan. Like I was painting up uh, my troll bloods back when I started wargaming completely and I needed to do a tartan design. So I was like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna do tartan paint? So I looked onto his video, 
His video is hilarious. I love his segues. Uh, <laughs> I love that. And he is an incredibly talented painter. I think he's an amazing painter. And I really learned how to do that design and add my own elements to it so I can kind of make it my own. So I kind of like build off of that and go in my own direction with it to change the colors, outlining the, the squares and doing it to that, creating a little different hashtag textures. Um, yeah, so I think it's really, really cool uh, that he came up, but he actually ripped apart Luke's APS's video step by step explaining how uh, every point that Luke made was absolutely wrong. Uh, they're, they're not opaque paints. They're um, not easy to use. They, they take a little bit of getting used to. Um, I like to paint uh, in very, like I'll, I'll liquefy with medium and water my paints to the point where um, two thin coats if I'm doing a really nice transition, 20 to 30 thin coats maybe, I don't know. I don't really count, but I paint, I wait till it's dry completely, then I paint again. Then I wait till it's dry completely, then I paint again. And then I wait till it dries completely, and then I paint again. And I'm slowly bringing up transitions that way. And that way is easy for me because it's more forgiving, especially if I make a mistake, because one of those 30 layers aren't really gonna make a difference. But if I do this same motion eight to 10 times, eight to 10 coats, and starts, br starts bringing up that color and making that transition, I can slowly and gradually make transitions that way uh, the slower i do it the better for me because that's how i learn until i get really comfortable with it and then i reduce the amount of coats that i need so that's how i learned how to paint that, that's how i learned how to paint back in the 90s um I, I watched this video called hot lead i forgot who is made from and then the miniature uh tutor yeah i got a paint i had uh, some I had some fancy David days back in the day about how to paint. That's how they painted. They painted in small increments, very, very, um, very, very uh, diluted paint, and they slowly brought it out. Painting Buddha also does that, where he just really, really slowly brings up the colors and the transitions, and they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. They're seamless. Um, I kind of got into that, and that's how I kind of learned how to paint. I learned how to paint that way, but I'm a teacher, so you know, when it comes to patience, I got like high levels of patience. I don't mind taking um, a year to paint ten models. That's about that's that's fine, you know. But in fact, when I started painting again uh, in the 2000s, so two three years ago, I started painting again from the 90s till now. Um, and when I started that, I um, three years ago. It took me a year to do 10 models and I was fine with it because the discovery process and learning so many things and the thing that, you know, there's a YouTube now with all these tutorials and stuff like that I can learn from, uh, maybe not take Canon, like everything is like right and complete, but I can learn from, it really, really uh, impacted me on how I can change my way of thinking and get a lot quicker when it comes to painting. All right, so I gotta say, Luke took it like a champ. He came back onto Cujo's, um, Cujo's, uh, I'm gonna shut that off, it's the air compressor. Um, he came back to Cujo's video, and yeah, you know, he could see where he went wrong. Um, and yeah, he took it like a champ. Uh, it's, it's good advice Cujo gave. If you're a beginner, I would tend to, most beginners being generalized, stay away from uh, regular scale 75 paints. However, um, if you do learn how to use, if you do know how to learn how to use and get used to the gel medium, you know, can't, can't love their inks. All right. Anyway, I love painting with inks. Um, so that's just me. All righty. So, yep. So stay away from gel, uh, gel based mediums. If all you want to do is coat, wash, you know, get that opacity and stuff like that and get it done. Uh, scale 75 is for slowly bringing up transitions um, for, you know, wet blending very delicately and getting the right, you know, consistency uh, of the paint 
in order to work with it. Um, so, beginners? Yep, yeah, I would stay away from it. But as you get better and you really want to up your game, then yeah, it's a game changer. Um, all right, so there's there's the drama. Drama? I thought it was exciting. I was like, oh my gosh, look at this. Who just calling somebody out? All right. Uh, I like Kujo, man. He's he's pretty talented and very opinionated. Plus, that fox is pretty cool. I think it's a fox. I don't know. Or is it a wolf? Hmm. All right. So, I wanted to go over uh, Uncle Adam at Tabletop Minions. Gave great advice. Now, I'm not very good at the tabletop wargaming because I... I don't know all my abilities. Like, if you're gonna make an informed decision, you gotta know what your army does precisely. You gotta know what your auras are precisely. And you have to use those things to your advantage on the field. But I kinda don't know my options. Like, could I do this? Is this active? Can I spend the point on this? Do I really know this? How can I attack? What is this unit for? How can I best use it in this situation? Blah, 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 blah. I don't know all that stuff. And I'll learn in time. Um, like it took me 10, it took me a year to do 10 miniatures. It'd probably take me 10 years to learn all how all my miniatures will synchronize. And I'm okay with that. I'm fine, you know? Uh, this is a hobby, not, you know, I don't make money off of this, so this is just something I do for fun. So um, becoming the best player in the universe is not my, my goal. Winning a game maybe once or twice here and there would be nice. Uh, so he came up with a great idea. Um, Uncle Adam came up with Tabletop Minions. He said that if you really want to learn your army, um, switch with the guy you're playing with. If they keep on wiping off the table, maybe he knows or she knows something that you don't on how to use your army better. Um, also, let somebody else play your army against other people. Some people that are, you know, maybe who are very well versed in, you know, the competitive side of playing. Take your list. If you only have that one list, I only have my one list. <laughs> and see how that can synergize, how can you use, how you can use that most efficiently. Um, I'm not saying my, my list is not going to be optimized. It's a take all comers list, but you know, see what the more talented person would do if they had your list. It's great advice. And I can see so much value in that. Um, okay. So this, this is for YouTubers. Okay. Um, if you're into photography and getting camera angles and stuff like that, and you're a YouTuber and you really want to up your game, Peter McKinnon is amazing that's m-c-k-i-n-n-o-n -N -N. peter mckinnon um, i like his beginner photography mistakes uh, a lot of people make and great video great video but check out his channel also drone film guides uh awesome masking trick for youtube so if you're producing you need to mask your your area awesome way to do it um and then shutterstock tutorials nine cuts Every video editor should know. Very, very good stuff. That's Shutterstock Tutorials. Great channels. I like to, uh, videotography is one of my other hobbies. So I'm kind of into, you know, bettering the YouTube game, I guess. Uh, getting a lot of angles and stuff like that and getting like dramatic poses and, and like chop a pow kind of things going on there. You know what I mean? Like zoop. I don't know. I like sounds now. Um, so when it comes to photography and videotography, check out those channels. Pretty awesome channels. And finally, I really like to give a shout out to some newer channels. Uh, the Crimson Painter, up and coming. Pretty cool guy. Seems to to be really, seems to love the hobby. Seems to really love the hobby. Pretty cool guy. Check him out if you're not subs to him. The Crimson Painter, pretty good. And part of the... Um, Part of the unification group, Nick Beer 40K's unification group, which I'm a part of too, because I believe that as YouTubers, especially content creators, we should help each other out. I mean, we really should. Um, because we're all passionate about our hobbies, and if we unite, we're stronger than if we're just alone. Um, and Dread Wa Gaming, that's W A A A G H, Dread Wa Gaming. 
looks like a really up and coming channel. A lot of fun. The dude is pretty pretty cool. He has dreads. I don't know anything about hair. You know, I used to. I don't know. It was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> pretty cool guy. A lot of fun. Uh, Dreadwog Gaming. I've been watching his videos. I've been having a great time watching his videos. You should ch definitely check him out. So shout out to that. Last, saving the best for last. Mr. Vince Ventruella, I have to give a shout out because I'm a teacher as a profession and I can really appreciate methods of teaching, um, best practices when it comes to teaching. I take painting classes. I go to the convention centers and I don't play games. I'm there for the painting classes. That, that is my primary reason. I want to learn more. And secondary reason, see if I can, you know, if there's some new product out or something like that. Like, you know, game, uh, game Green Stuff Worlds, like those little leaf cutters. I'm see if I can get those. Maybe a rolly pin or two. Um, and maybe another two game mats because every year for the next three years I've been picking up game mats. Yes, I have six game mats. I don't know. I have a thing. I wish more people than just Table War would put game mats there. Um, I might get a case now, now that I have a competition mini get a case for the magnets and stuff like that. So, because you know, you don't want to put them in the foam cases because they rub and the friction and stuff like that. I digress. <laughs> Vince Ventruella is one of the best, not only painters that I know, but also one of the best, or the, I would venture to say the best teacher that I know because he's methodical. Because he teaches like I, I teach. If you are struggling somewhere, he will come to you and help you. So if you are not registered for all of his classes at Nova Open or anywhere he goes to teach classes, if you haven't gone to CK Studios and checked out his classes, I highly encourage you, highly game changer, life changer, miniature painting changer, next level having, um, definitely go and see the Mastercraft at hand. Um, great, great fella. Uh, awesome dude. Like really. Um, and like such a pillar of the community with all those hobby cheating videos. Check out the hobby cheating videos. Check out Warhammer Weekly with Tom and you know his guest stars if you're in strategy and gaming and new things. All things for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Uh, check that out as well. Uh, awesome channel, definitely a shout out. You know, um, I, I've been on his channel once and I was honored and I really didn't know what I was doing because I was just starting out and I bought a whole bunch of minis and I was like, I don't even know how to play this game and he let me on anyway. <laughs> Check that out. Uh, probably had the lowest views ever. <laughs> I don't know, maybe one day. But I'm definitely, Vince, I'm, I'm definitely, once I get my computer rig set up, I am gonna call you and uh, maybe we can get together. I gotta learn the OBS thing. I wanna do some OBS magic uh, and you know, really showcase. Uh, and you can come on to the show and we'll definitely be pfft, blow my mind amazing. We can talk about some interesting topics. I'll give you an uh, itinerary and agenda and everything else. You know how organized, I'll, I'll let you know how organized and obsessed I am with things. <laughs> but yeah, if, first of all, if you don't know who Vince Venturella is, I don't know what rock you're living under, but you need to, Patrick, get out your rock. Get out your rock, you know. SpongeBob is calling. Get out under your rock and check out Mr. Vince Ventruella and his channel, and mark a sub, and then you know put the little bell icon so this way you can get a notification every single time. And 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 be sad if you miss his live shows. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so anywho, I I'm not gonna do a paint and chat. Uh, again, I want to take my mom to a baseball game. <laughs> I really do. Um, I I am planning to do the next show. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit, and I want to have you actually think about it, and please, 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 put some questions down there. What you think? You, what direction you want me to go for the next show? Because I really want to talk about a really uh, provocative subject when it comes to to war gaming and tabletop gaming and everything else. Um, and that is a link of depression and tabletop gaming. Like, there's a link. I would have to say, 
a good 80% of the people that I've met in the miniature painting hobby at one point have been depressed or suffered from depression or suffer, have suffered from depressive episodes. Um, some, you know, to the extent that it was suicidal and some like Kirnoff, I think he's, he's one. Um, the whole and he, he came out and said that uh, on his channel so it's nothing new but there's so many people that struggle with that and I think that you know maybe if we band together or maybe we dispel some myths uh, or maybe we can expose it and make an awareness uh, of it maybe have you know some kind of like hey you know what band or some I don't know something something you know um, or maybe maybe it's just really good for the hobby. Maybe it's therapeutic. But we're gonna explore all the topics. I'm doing a lot of research on that. Um, and we're gonna get into it the next one, probably a paint and chat style. If not, it's gonna be a vlog style. Um, computer's just about done. I, I need to learn how to use Windows because I've only used Mac for, for video editing. So I'm gonna have to learn how to use Windows and Adobe and I have to learn how to use you know uh, OBS and uh, I need to know how to use uh, when I say Adobe, I mean, you know, After Effects and, and, you know, like everything about Adobe I have to learn. So I've been doing a lot of research videos when it comes to that. Um, this background might change. Might change because my computer is actually going to be over there. Over there. Uh, so it's not going to be where my airbrush booth is. Interesting, right? I don't know. Hmm, I don't know if... Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I'll change the airbrush booth over here to that side so this way my desk, computer desk, could be over here in the middle so you can have the same background. Or I do have a green screen, so I might have something in the background. I don't know. So these are things that I'm going to be exploring and stuff like that. Uh, if you have a question, please post it down there. And I want to feature you for the question of the week. And it can be just about anything Wargaming related or maybe about uh, depression and tabletop gaming. Tell me your story, start a conversation. We'll have a whole bunch of conversations down here. We're gonna start it now, we're gonna lead up to uh, a big show next week that I'm planning. I'm, I'm really hoping that it'll, you know, really explode and people be uh, can get aware of the benefits of tabletop gaming, war gaming, or anything like that uh, when it comes to depression because I've read a lot of interesting articles and um, yeah, yeah, interesting. All right, so <laughs> hopefully you like this video. If you watched it all the way to the end, I mean, I commend you. If you didn't like it, then, you know, what can I say? Um, I try <laughs> and I will continue to try. All right. Um, but if you do like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.